Hey, do you want to be the antidote to all the doom and gloom? Join me as I come from my slice of life to help bring more joy into yours. This is the My Slice of Life podcast. Hello and a very warm welcome to you. This is the My Slice of Life podcast. If you've been here before, I am delighted you've decided to come back. Lovely to have you. And if you are new to this podcast, welcome. We've been waiting for you. This is season two. So again, if you're new, you have a whole season to catch up on. And this season, we are putting the joy back into being prepared. Prepared for what? All sorts of things. And and if you missed last week, we were putting the joy back into being prepared for car breakdowns. But this week, I am asking you the question. Are you prepared for health hiccups. All those things that are going to come over us in the, the season to come. You know that cold and flu season, is, is, you can feel it, it's coming, it's approaching, it's getting closer. Are you ready for it? Are you prepared? Now in season one I did do a uh, five natural remedies uh, episode. I think some of that won't be very, very useful. I am a big advocate for garlic and honey, so that's one that I go to a lot. And if you go on YouTube, I don't know about Rumble because I haven't like, I haven't actually checked Rumble, but I know they're on YouTube. Um, I've found some videos for like making cough remedies and things like that. So I have a short list of things to think about, and are we ready for these? Let's get prepared. Okay. So we'll start off with coughs. Do you have anything in the house ready if somebody starts developing a cough? Now, you know yourself, there's different kinds. You get the the really raspy, chesty coughs. You've got your dry, tickly coughs. Do you have anything in the house? Because you know, we all know, if somebody's going to get one, it's going to be on a Friday night when everything's closed and you can't get out and get anything. So do you have anything at hand that you can use? Get prepared. That's what we need to do. Now, if you've got a cough quite often it's going to come with a cold or it's coming after the cold so do you have stuff in for that or do you rely on you know the hot lemon tea you can't beat lemon tea with honey in it is fantastic even like paracetamol you don't have to go for the big brands who have 101 claims that they're going to help you sleep or clear your nose or do all this stuff just plain old paracetamol is quite often I would take and a lovely big mug of oh, steaming hot lemon tea. You just can't beat it. And again, for colds, be prepared. Stop yourself getting one in the first place. Get your get your garlic in you every day. Get some decent honey in you every single day. And who knows, maybe you'll skip the colds and coughs altogether. Boost that immune system. People don't really talk about immune system. We're always dealing with the symptoms and you know, how to, oh, how to deal with that cold you have now. How about not getting it in the first blooming place? Work on our immune systems. We know we should be eating healthy. We know we need to go outside for oxygen and get that sun on your skin. Get those vitamins and you eat some more fruit and veg. Drink a glass of orange juice in the morning. It's not difficult. We can boost our immune systems. And I'm saying this, again, reminding myself, because... I'll be honest, the first thing I do when I get up, okay, where's the coffee? We need to remember it can be done pretty easily. Get a good glass of orange juice and try and eat a bit more fruit and veg through the day outside for the sunlight or just daylight. I'm saying, I'm looking at our window, it's pretty, pretty grey, but just a bit of daylight on your skin. Get the immune system boosted. Get the honey, get the garlic, all the good stuff and hopefully we can skip the colds altogether and all the other nasty things that come along with them anyway. So are you prepared for anybody getting cuts and grazes? And if you have kids, you know, they're always falling over and they've always got a wee graze. Do you have your antiseptic creams? Do you have those? You get really nice little wipes that are antiseptic. They're so easy just to keep in a cupboard. Do you have, do you even have a first aid box? Do you have one at home? Have you organised that? Now the ones you buy in the shop, see to be honest with you, I don't 
I don't put much faith in them. They're always full of these fillers that you're not going to use. You know, the kind of the plasters that don't stick to anything. Personally, I would say get a nice container, put the stuff in it you're going to need. Put your cough medicine in it, get your paracetamol in it, get your antiseptic wipes and an antiseptic cream in it. It used to be just everybody had a bottle of TCP, you know, that stinky stuff. That seemed to do everything when I was a kid. But if you have that in the cupboard, you're you're doing pretty well. And there's a couple more things that we can put in it, so let's have a look. So if you've got your stuff, your antibacterial things for the cuts and grazes, you're going to need plasters, pretty much, you know, depending. Sometimes there's, you know, that old thing, just let the air get to it, depending on what kind of graze or cut we're talking about. Now, there are natural remedies. Again, I've been hearing, because I look them up, and I'm, I'm certainly not a herbalist, and I'm not, you know, saying that I'm qualified in any way at all. But a really weird one, well, I think it's weird, um, that I heard about for, you know, cuts in the kitchen, and I've used this. Uh, you know, you're chopping up, and you just nick your finger. I do that quite often. You know, you're in a hurry, you nick your finger. And what I heard was, go in your spice cupboard, and get the cayenne pepper. Yeah, I know. Get the cayenne pepper and sprinkle it all over your cup. Apparently, um, it's I can't remember what the, why it works, but it stops the bleeding. And yes, it does nip. I must admit, mine did nip. And some people can't tolerate it. Apparently, sometimes it's really, really, really nippy for some folk. But it was okay for me. I used it and it stopped it. Either if that, or if you're into your plants, if you have yarrow, I don't know if you know that one, but apparently. Um, Yarrow. I think you have to dry it preferably and grind it into a powder and you can make a paste um, with it. But look into that a wee bit more. I should have had more information for you on that one, but it just came to me. Um, so yeah, yarrow or cayenne pepper. Everybody's got that in the cupboard. Try it. If it's too stingy, sorry, blame me, but I tried it and it was okay. Uh, so keep that in the spice cupboard. Don't put it in your first aid box. Just saying. Headaches, again, Paracetamol, I reckon, is best for me anyway. That's what I use. Depending, some people I've actually heard a lot of people say, you know, they skip the tablets altogether. If you actually have a headache, first of all, take water because you know, we're all dehydrated pretty much, aren't we? And the first sign that you need more water is a headache. So I would drink water first, don't jump to the tablets. Just you know, that's that's what I try and do. Um, I was told once. That once you've done that, if you've still got the headache, eat an apple. Allegedly, it has stuff in it to help naturally for headaches, but you can work that one out yourself. But have some some sort of plan. You have a headache. Is it a tension headache? Is it a real headache? Do you need water? Do you just need to lie down? Are you just tired? Have you been at the computer screen too long? Rule all these things out first before we jump to the paracetamol. Do you have anything in your little first aid box or your first aid cupboard, whatever you have, if somebody's been really sick? Now, if you've got kids, it's horrible. But, you know, you can get these um, rehydrating sachets. They taste disgusting. And I've been finding a lot of them have got sweeteners in them because they taste disgusting. So I don't like using them. And I know if you go online and do a quick search for you know, like rehydration salts, there are recipes online you can make your own. It's something to think about. If you're happy to use the sachets, then it's worth having something on hand. Because again, when somebody's going to start being violently sick, it's, you know it's going to be in a Friday night and you're we're running around, oh, what do we do? What do we do? Have something there so you are prepared for this sort of situation. Now, again, we know if it's going to come out that end, there's a good chance it's going to come out the other end too. Do you have anything for diarrhoea in the house? You can get these tablets, again, that will well, they claim to stop it pretty instantly. If you want to go down the herbal route, you go and research that. But point there's no point knowing about it if you don't have it in the house. And we're trying to get prepared here. So build up your stock. Get your wee cupboard ready or your little first aid box at the ready. Now one thing... I was thinking about this, and it's all very well having you know, things like that, and get your you know your plasters and your bandages, and but then when I was doing some homeschooling with our son, and we were actually looking at this kind of thing, and uh, we were looking at first aid, 
how to put on a bandage, you know, what to do if someone's choking, what to do if uh, you think somebody's broken their arm, all these different things. And the videos that we used, because I think it's really handy to see a video, see somebody else doing it and talk you through it. We went onto YouTube and we looked up the St John's Ambulance. They have brilliant first aid training videos and they're really short, they're to the point and they're basically step by step to talk you through what to do if. So what to do if somebody's choking, if somebody's got a bad burn or a scald, if they've really, you know, got a deep cut, all these different things, um, even like the, the cover everything from the Heilich manoeuvre and what to do if it's different ages as well. So if you have an adult choking all the way down to baby choking. The videos are really good. I really highly recommend that go and check them out. St John's Ambulance on YouTube, first aid training videos. On top of all that, what I would say is if you're taking a prescription medication on a regular basis, make sure you always have some in the house so that you don't run out. I think that's really important as well, especially if, like here, our pharmacy that we use, they've changed their opening hours and it's not always that easy to get in to get your prescription sorted out. So make sure you always have what you need and pop, you know a little bit extra so you do not run out. That, that's covering your health, that's being prepared for all eventualities. If you have people in your house with other health needs, just take a few minutes to think, what do I need to have here? Instead of always thinking, well, if I run out, I can just nip out and get it. That's not always the case. I think the last couple of years have, have shown us that. Let's not have to worry or panic if something crops up. If we're prepared, we can deal with it. We don't need to rely on other people. We've got this. Yeah, we've got this. We can do this. Not a problem. Okay, so that's giving you something to go and do this week. Get yourself ready for any health hiccups that happen your way. You try saying that quickly because it took me a couple of times. <laughs> I will be back next week with another question for you. Are you prepared for... Now, I'm not going to tell you. Of course, you have to tune in next week. But until then, you take care of your self. <laughs>